and we're live. Great. Well, good evening. Um, thank you to everyone out there for joining us tonight. We're, we're working on a continuing series here at Bloomsburg University where uh, we let you uh, get to know us a little better through, uh, through Facebook Live. And, um, you know, hopefully you can meet the pack, get to know us, and, uh, you know, we'd, we'd love to see you as students here on our campus um, this fall, uh, fall of 2021. It's now 2021. My name is Chris Lapos. I'm our Associate Vice President of Admissions. If you're watching this, uh, that means you're curious about college. That means you may have applied to college. And um, if you did, uh, I might be the guy that has read or will read your application. Been with Bloomsburg uh, for about 20 years now. Um, I love uh, being a Husky. Uh, I hope you all uh, want to become Huskies, and uh, I'm excited to uh, for you to get to know some some additional Huskies here, so that you can become part of the family and get to know the pack. I'm here tonight with Dr. Daryl Fridley. He is a dean in the College of Education at Bloomsburg University. Um, he brings a wealth of experience. Um, he's an educator. He's an administrator. Um, he's a family man. Uh, wears a lot of hats. Um, but but his passion really uh, at Bloomsburg University is supporting students and uh, taking uh, high school students as 18 year old um, kids coming into college and turning them into professionals in four years. Um, Dr. Fridley, welcome tonight. Thank you for joining us and. Um, you know, we're, we're so glad you're at Bloomsburg University. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about how you got here. Um, I know you used to teach college. I know at one point you were a social studies teacher in high school. Now you're a dean. And uh, I think that means you're in charge of uh, a whole bunch of majors and, and a whole bunch of people, not to mention responsible for get, turning kids into young professionals. So it's a big, big hat. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I have no idea how I got here. I just woke up one day and, and I was in Pennsylvania. You were. Um, no, I think it was actually mostly I-80 um, for a long time into Ohio. Mm -hmm. I, I got out of college. I was a social studies teacher. And what I found throughout my career, I, wanted, I, I was constantly interested in, in how to make things better, how to improve the experience for students. And, I, and I, as I, I would run into challenges and uh, try to figure out how to change it. And then as it went through it, well, maybe I can change this if I'm a department chair. Maybe I can change this if I get another degree. And maybe I can, if I can get from a different perspective. Uh, I ended up with a PhD and then I ended up teaching you know, at a university and I was associate dean. And then when the, this role opened up, uh, at BU, I applied and, and I ended up here. But it's mostly just been, I had no intention of ever being anything like a dean or a university administrator. Uh, it has just been, uh, as I worked through my career, the opportunities arose and, and I thought, this is, this is I, I have a different point of, of leverage. I, I have more power, more authority, more potential to do things uh, that I think are important from the uh, a little bit higher vantage point. Yeah, that's that, and that's really interesting. You know, that's such a common trait uh, at Bloomsburg University. Um, you know, people who come here and work here uh, want to fix problems and and lift others up. And uh, you know, you, it sounds like you bring such a wealth of experience that you probably could have worked at a number of different places, but um, you chose Bloomsburg. We're glad you did, but is, is there a, a reason that you thought this was such a good fit to come to Bloomsburg here? I think before you were in Missouri. I was in Missouri, but I was in a very similar kind of university. And I, when I started thinking about being a dean, becoming a dean, I looked for places that would allow me to, to use my experiences. Uh, where I was in Missouri was a a four-year comprehensive regional university that had a strong regional mission. We had a lot of students who came from the region and then went back out and taught in the region. And, um, and a lot in, in terms of education, our, our students would teach, uh, would come, we would prepare them to be teachers. They'd go out and they'd teach and their students would come to the university. There's a lot of that. Um, 
circulation within the region. We also had a lot of first time students, so first people in their family. Uh, former president at Southeast Missouri State at every graduation would ask uh, all the all the students, all the graduates who were the first graduates in their family to, to stand up. And there were always a, a lot. It was, a, you know, and, and I think that's really important in terms of this kind of university offer, offering opportunity. Um, and, and I see that in, in particularly in education, I think we have, um, we have a particular uh, interest and in commitment to the schools in our, in our region. And uh, we take that very seriously. We're not just, we prepare teachers who can go any place, but we expect a lot of our teachers are going to go in this region. And we really feel committed to the teachers and the schools and particularly the K-12 students who live in the region who go to those schools. We want them to have the best education. And of course, it's so important uh, to be training that next generation of teachers who are gonna be molding and shaping our young people, but it's not for everybody, right? I mean, you know, why why should you go into teaching? Um, teachers, to me, seem to be a pretty special bunch. If there's people that are interested in teaching, um, you know, I, I would think there's some traits that are going to make make you successful. The uh, definitely. What we would like uh, in the College of Education at BU, we'd like everybody to think about teaching, or as many people as possible to think about teaching. What we won't do is try to convince everybody that they ought to be a teacher. What if, uh, if a student comes to, to BU and declares a major as, uh, in education or just comes talk to an advisor, we wanna make sure that they can make an informed decision. Teaching is not for everybody. I've met lots of students. My background is social studies and I taught secondary middle school. And I've met lots of students who are really interested in history. And they thought, well, what can I do with it? Well, I could be a history teacher. Turns out though, that there's a whole other part of being a, a social studies teacher and that's spending six hours a day with 14 year olds. Mm -hmm. And that's not everybody's bag on the same, you know, by the same token, there are people who really love to be around kids, but they don't really, they, you know, just learning themselves and knowing a bunch, you know, a, a bunch of, a bunch about particular area, that's not really their thing either. But what we can do and, and what we consider ourselves a part of the larger blue BU community. And so when somebody comes to us and we talk with them and they say, oh, I'm not really sure this is what I want to do. We want to help them find a, uh, the major, the career, the profession, uh, the calling that is meant for them. So we won't just say, oh, you can't be a teacher or you don't, you don't really seem like a teacher. We're going to ask questions about, well, what, what do you like to do? What can you do that will be happy? Because that's ultimately our goal. We want you to come to be you. We want you to develop as a human being and be happy. And we want you to get out there and be able to find a job that you're gonna be happy in. Uh, there's a big uh, attrition problem in teaching. Lots of, lots of people quit in the first five years. And uh, we wanna make sure that our teachers know what they were getting into when they got into it. And, um, and then we'll keep supporting them. And that's really, you know, that's what gives us an edge, especially in education. We've been doing, we've been training teachers for almost 180 years now. We know what we're doing, and, and it sounds like you're trying to address these problems of attrition, uh, you know, at the degree level, um, so that we're training uh, young individuals to go out there and shape the next generation um, and stick with it and and, um, and grow and, and craft the profession. Um, you were a teacher, you, you taught social studies, um, you taught in college. Do you, do you remember your favorite, uh, favorite class to teach in high school or college? Or was there one that uh, really sticks with you? When I was, when I was teaching um, in high school, I really liked teaching 20th century American history uh, and also comparative government. I taught a couple of AP classes and I found that uh, the, the high school students really benefited from looking at other governments and other societies and being able to compare them. They really learned a lot about the US government by making that comparison. When I got into college, I, uh, I did teach in the history department for a while and I, and I liked some of the classes there. But what I really liked best was uh, a teaching social studies methods class 
where you take the content and you take the, the pedagogy, the teaching part, and you put it together, you say, how do you teach this? Uh, because some people have the, the mistaken notion that, well, if you can teach one thing, you can teach anything. And that's not true. You really have to know your content uh, because you teach things differently. You teach math differently than you teach English, than you teach history, than you teach biology. And uh, so I enjoyed that class. Yeah. And it must be hard for a young person to, you know, they might know they want, they want to be a teacher, but, um, you know, if they haven't had any experience, um, you know, how, how could they possibly make that decision? Um, how are they going to know what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis in, in a career, um, you know, when they're 17 or 18? Well, first thing I would say, anybody interested in teaching ought to be talking to their teachers right now. So you're still in high school, talk to your teachers about what they think. And, 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 um, and it's tough because lots of teachers are, are, are really at the end of the rope right now after teaching online for a year and, and all that. But, but the, the good ones will be honest with you. Talk to them, ask them, why did they get into it? Why did, why did they, what did they like about it? What don't they like about it? Um, ask them what they think about your personality and, and your ability to fit in because um, <clears throat> they've worked with you as a student. And then try to get experiences where you're working with different age groups of, of children. You know, find out if you would like that. Because if, if it's tough for you to, I don't know, deal with a, a pack of Cub Scouts for 35 minutes, it's going to be challenging for you to deal with eighth graders for six hours. Um, and you're probably not going to be happy. Uh, and then the thing that I would say is when we, when you get here, we embed quite a few field experiences. We try to get students out into the field um, so that you have an opportunity to interact with teachers, see what they're doing and, and begin doing things um, at as early a stage as possible. So those are all things. And, and again, any of the things that you can do just to have, um, just to spend time doing those, whether it's volunteering at a camp or, uh, you know, the things that at the library, summer reading programs, those are the kind of things that really help. Because you do want to make a, an informed decision. I always tell people teaching is a great job if you love it. If you don't, there are lots of jobs that you can hate all day and make more money. You, teaching is not a job that you want to hate because it doesn't pay enough to hate it. Get a job someplace else that you hate and, may, and you can make enough money to do what you want on the weekends or on your vacations if you're just going to hate your job. And, and that's, you know, that's a good point. And that's why I, I know that our, our professors have, have crafted an exceptional program uh, that gets students in the classroom early and gets them, uh, gets them that experience they need uh, so that they, they go into this uh, with eyes open. And I, and I imagine... You know, with uh, teaching changing so rapidly now during COVID, um, you know, I know that there's a lot of uh, cutting edge programs and, and certificates that are being spun off to, to accommodate this, this new landscape uh, we find ourselves in um, that's, that students can take with them anywhere. I know, for example, we have an educational tech uh, certification that's, that I know is going to be uh, interesting for a lot of people in this day and age. Yeah, and, and actually the, we haven't done anything new, um, but, but the things that we have done, I mean, we're doing some new teaching thing, but in terms of our programs, uh, they, they have a whole different context now. So we have a, an emotional and social behavior uh, endorsement, which uh, it had a different context before all this. But mm -hmm. now the stress that, that high school students and the, the K-12 students in general are under because of the, of the pandemic makes that all the more useful. The ed tech minor or certificate is, is another thing. We have a STEM endorsement uh, there. Um, in addition, we're always trying to, to grow. What we want to do as a program in a college is we wanna model what good teachers do, which is constantly improving. And so, although there's been a lot of movement on uh, like teaching virtually and in various technology because of the pandemic, all of that was coming and all of it was going on in some places. 
And what we want to do is we want to be able to get ahead of it. Our students, what we're working on now, is we're working on how do we revise our program, improve our programs so that uh, our graduates are, are better prepared to teach in a virtual environment. Because even with no pandemic, there's, that's not going away. There's still going to be opportunities and expectations to do that. And we want people to feel comfortable doing it. Yeah. Um, you know, you're involved in, in your position as, as you know, you're in, you're in charge of, of a college at Bloomsburg University. You're an administrator, but I imagine as an educator, it's, it's hard to separate yourself completely from students. Um, I have a daughter that goes to Bloomsburg University. She uh, did not choose one of your programs. Um, but, you know, if I were dropping my uh, son or daughter off at college uh, to, to become a teacher, um, you know, I would expect, uh, first of all, I'd expect they'd be on the dean's list. But I've heard there may be two dean's lists uh, that may bring you into contact with students, one good, one bad. Um, do you still have a lot of contact with students? And, and uh, what, what's your role in, in mentoring and helping students? Well, Chris, see me next year and I'll be able to tell you. I <laughs> right. moved here. I moved here at the end of February last year. So I have to say that in the job as I've, ex as I've experienced it in the last year, I have not had much contact with students. <laughs> um, but it so is far, my, just through Zoom, huh? It is my goal to. Uh, the college, I uh, have instituted a, a student advisory council where we meet with students um, in a with student leadership a couple of times a semester. So we get feedback from students who've had opportunities to uh, already to, to speak to uh, one or two of the organizations. I look for ways because it can, you can get into that position as an administrator, and this happens in high schools too and other schools, where the only time you interact with a student is when they're in trouble. And, um, and so I want to go out of my way to find out what, what's on students' minds, get to know students. And so that, that will be a, a, a goal of mine once we're actually be able to interact with other human beings. And that's, yep. Yeah, and, and, and it's hard, you know, uh, all of us take a personal interest in our students. And, um, you know, all we want for them is to succeed and continue with their careers. And, and I know there's, there's so many opportunities out there uh, after a four-year degree, uh, you know, you leave with your um, licensure, um, or you take your take your licensure before you leave, and you're ready to go. I mean, you're ready to start in a career. I, I know there's a lot of opportunities, not just in Pennsylvania, but um, with reciprocal states as well. Is that correct? Yes, and there is a teacher shortage, and teacher shortage has been exacerbated by the pandemic. We hear stories about teachers just walking out in the middle of the year. Uh, certainly lots of people who were in line, who were getting close to retirement just decided, okay, I'm going to just go ahead and do it. Uh, there are lots of opportunities, particularly if you're interested in teaching special ed or any of the STEM fields, but, uh, but pretty much anything, the, um, the, the number of people interested in becoming teachers has gone down in the last several years. So, yeah, the job prospects are good. And, and we have a, you know, we have that wonderful program and dual certification that you can get with uh, special ed, one of our most uh, sought after mm -hmm. programs, correct? Yes. Yeah, so you can, um, you can get to leave here with two certifications um, in uh, teaching young children and teaching uh, special ed. Um, and you make yourself even, even more marketable. Um, Part of words. In, 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 oh, sorry. In addition, we have those endorsements, so you can get two. You know, you prepare yourself for two certifications, but we also have all other kinds of things that you can do to make yourself more marketable. And but I would say even more importantly, to make yourself a better teacher. If you have that uh, a broader array of skills, yeah, people are more likely to want to um, to hire you. But it also helps you understand your students better, and so that's those are some things that are that are pretty valuable. Wise words, Dr. Fridley. Um, well, th this has been a great interview. Is there anything you want to tell um, our prospective students that may be watching and want to be teachers? Um, 
you know, should they do really well their senior year or should they kind of coast into the finish line? I'm supposed to tell them that they should do really well, right? Yes. That's okay, song. yes, you should do really well. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh, yes, you should do, you should, you should, of course you should do really well. Uh, the, the whole thing about your permanent record and then following you it, it may be a, a little bit overblown. But I think the main thing is and what I see from students is not so much that you got to make sure you have your grades up and everything. People lose momentum. So you, you've been working hard. And then you wanna, when, sometimes when people kind of blow off the second semester of their senior year, they lose that edge and, and they don't pick it up in the fall when they go to college sometimes. Part of it is just about kind of keeping yourself moving, keeping your brain in that, in that, uh, in that mode of learning. Uh, so, you know, maybe there's room to, to maybe not be in fifth gear because you do need to enjoy it. This has been, and for those of you who are seniors, man, I have nothing but the, the greatest, you know, sympathy but also you. respect for you. That is, it has been tough. Um, so certainly if you have the opportunity to, to be good to yourself and, um, uh, you know, spend some time with your friends or whatever, I encourage you to do that. Um, the other thing I would like to say uh, before we go is I don't believe we are recruiting you just to come to be you. In the College of Ed, we think of this discussion I'm trying to convince you to begin a partnership, a relationship with the College of Ed that I hope will last your career. We, we, have the, we have the programs that will help prepare you to be a teacher. We have support networks that will help you once you get in to be a teacher. We have graduate programs that will help you become a better teacher or help you expand to become an administrator or a school counselor or something else. We're, we're going to come to you and ask for you to be a mentor to our young teachers to maybe take student teachers. We want to work with you. We're going to ask you to be on advisory boards or other things like that. We, we, we believe that when you come to BU and you graduate with a degree in education, that you, we're, we're not done then. That's just the beginning of our, our adventure together. And uh, Practicing professionals in education every day make our program better, are essential to our program. So we want to help you prepare to have a career that you're going to love, but we also want to keep working with you so that you want to stay in that and we can support you. So uh, I, I look forward to seeing you retire in 35 years. Wise words, Dr. Fridley, and, and that it, it is a lifestyle commitment and um, you know we're we're teaching and, and molding you appropriately as students and I, I think that's such a great message that that's going to continue well past the four years you spend at Bloomsburg you're really you're really um, you know coming into to a system and a family that uh, spans decades uh, throughout your life and and you'll always be a part of that and that's that's something that runs through uh, almost every program here at Bloomsburg. So thank you so much for those words. I, I know there's uh, some students and parents uh, checking us out out there on Facebook right now. Uh, don't forget to, um, we're gonna drop a link right below here uh, in a minute or two. Um, if we'd love to know more about you, uh, hit that link. Uh, we'll ask you some questions so that we know who you are. Or if you're ready to apply and you haven't, uh, we'll drop that down here too. And um, you can go right to the application. We'd love to have your application. We'd love to see you as students here next fall. We are um, working on a plan for the fall. I can't officially say that uh, you know it's going to be business as usual next fall, but I can tell you that everyone is working really hard uh, to get back to uh, where we were before COVID hit, and uh, we are we are hopeful for the fall of 2021. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Dr. Fridley. You have a good evening and I'll see you on campus. All right. Thank you. All right.